In this video I'll be presenting some guidelines from how to take a 5 part harmonisation into a full big band setting. And stick around to the end, where I'll do an example. It's hard to lock down any specific big band voicing techniques that Gil Evans has used throughout his work, as he used a variety of techniques. But I've done a deep dive into several scores, so here are 5 guidelines on how to expand your short score sketch into a big band. And just a wee warning, I'm going to be going through these advanced concepts quite quickly. In a future video, I might break down some of these points into greater detail. In a lot of my previous videos, I've talked about writing a bass line and three inner parts to a given melody to produce a five note chord, five distinct pitch classes. Now five notes isn't the magic number, but it seems to be the average that I've encountered in Gil Evans's work, especially amongst the melodic tutti passages. On dramatic points, Gill will often use more pitches for a more dissonant chord, but not usually during melodic passages. Let's start by looking at these few bars of It Ain't Necessarily So. Here we have an A minor 9 and then a D7 flat 9 sharp 11. There are five pitches on each of the chords. And here is how Gill has spread them throughout the brass and woodwind. I'll talk more about orchestration throughout the video. Pause the video here if you need to, so you can look at this in greater detail. Almost all of the time, the bass note, or horn on the bottom of the chord, is not doubled anywhere else in the upper parts. This is a very interesting thing I've seen throughout Gill's work. He does do it sometimes to accommodate a moving bass line or melodic event, but it is amazing how much I've seen this in his work. Have a look at the same passage from It Ain't Necessarily So. There aren't any bass notes present in the upper parts at all. Here is another example from There's a Boat That's Leaving Soon for New York. This exclamation is very brassy and bright. Again, no bass notes are doubled in the upper instruments. Gill uses the trombones where you'd expect to see them, but he also isn't afraid to push the trombones into the high register. Trombones 1, 2 and 3 are above middle C in this chord. The brass is really screaming here. Here is another example from The Duke. This part is the climax of the piece. Again, the trombones are placed fairly high in their range. All four of the trombones are above middle C here. The important notes of the chord, usually the third and seventh, are almost always present in the trombones, and right in the heart of the chord. Ensuring that the chord is well voiced in the lower parts allows the upper parts to carry more of the tensions and interesting notes. Even in this chord where all of the trombones are above middle C, they have the important notes covered. Back to the example from It Ain't Necessarily So. Here the trombones are in more of a typical range. You can see that each chord has the third and seventh nestled safely in the heart of the chord. Now I've left quite a lot to discuss at the end here, and this is a big subject to cover, so if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Back to this example from There's a boat that's leaving soon for New York. The trumpets are usually voiced in closed position, but not always. The trombones are often in open position due to the lower bass trombone part. The French horns will be reinforcing the melody, or spread throughout the middle of the chord as they would typically do in an orchestra and the wood ones provide support and reinforcement on other pitches. In this example of I Don't Want to Be Kissed from Miles Ahead, there are closed position trumpets, an open voicing of the trombones and tuba, the French horns are in the heart of the voicing, including one on the melody and octave below, and the wood ones, the bass clarinet is reinforcing the tuba, the alto sax is on the melody an octave below, the clarinet is adding colour and weight to the second trumpet, 
and the second bass clarinet is playing another inner part. Okay, if you've had enough bailout now, otherwise stick around, I'm going to do a quick example. Here are a few bars of a finished harmonisation of When I Fall In Love. It's the same example from one of my earlier videos. Now I'll voice it for big band. More specifically, alto sax, clarinet, two bass clarinets, four trumpets, four trombones, tuba and rhythm section. I've written in the bass part and I have the completed harmonisation here in the piano part for reference. OK, so first I'm going to copy the melody, paste it into the trumpets. And we'll keep this a little bit traditional and double that an octave below for the fourth trumpet. Then I'll fill in the second and third trumpet parts. They're going to go between the octaves, so we have a closed position trumpet voicing. Now for the trombone parts. I'll place the bass trombone and tuba part first. I'll have them doubling for a nice strong low end. Now I'll add trombones 1 to 3, making sure that the 3rd and 7th are present and that I've covered all of my five distinct pitches between the trumpets and trombones alone. Now I'll add the horns, and I'll have them play the melody down an octave. Now I'm going to add the clarinet and alto sax. I'll have the clarinet double the second trumpet, and the alto sax on the third trumpet part. And lastly, I'll put the bass clarinets in, one doubling the tuba and bass trombone, and the other can play another inner part, so that each of the woodwinds are doubling one of the inner parts. And that's it. Just a quick example of the short score spread out into a big band texture. Sorry about the nasty midi, but I don't have a big band at home. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions.